Labour Party has confirmed that it's dropping Liverpool's Deputy Lord Mayor, Petrona Lashley, from its list of candidates for the next local elections. Ms Lashley had been expected to become the first black Lord Mayor of Liverpool. The decision comes after newspapers revealed that Ms Lashley had criminal convictions. Councillor Lashley, a 53-year-old mother of three, is the only black member on Liverpool City Council and was being tipped to become the city's mayor as early as next spring. But several weeks ago, the Liverpool Echo newspaper revealed that during the 1970s, she'd been convicted of prostitution, and more recently, for deception. It's just a terribly sad story. It began with such hope and such optimism that here was Liverpool's first Black Lord Mayor, welcomed by everybody, good news for the city, great for her, great for us, a good news story. And it's turned into a tragedy. It's a story that nobody comes out of happily. Not us, not Patron Lashley, not the city of Liverpool. Sit in there, Are you ready? Patrona thoroughly deserved to be the Lord Mayor. She merited being put forward for the office. She was capable of doing it. She had been a loyal and capable councillor in the Labour group. She had never done anything as a councillor that was in any way questionable. And therefore, she was a credible and worthwhile candidate. Here was the opportunity to add to the reassurance to those black people that the way to the very top in any walk of life, profession or whatever, in politics, as first citizen, was there for them. It was also important to send the message to the rest of Liverpool. The council meant what it says when he said it was an equal opportunities employer. The decision by Liverpool Council to elect Patrona Lashley to high office last year was a landmark event, both for the city and its black population. Patrona came to Britain from the West Indies as a trainee nurse in the late 1950s. Today, she is a councillor for one of the poorest areas in an already deprived city. Patrona and many of her electors live in Granby, where the 1981 riots broke out. For generations, political office had been effectively denied to Liverpool's black citizens, most of whom live in the area known locally as Liverpool 8. In a city whose early fortunes and past history are so dominated by the slave trade, the historic election of someone who would become Liverpool's first Black Lord Mayor was bound to have a deep and symbolic significance. Hi, that's hi, you. The first black councillor in Liverpool was Liz Drysdale, elected after the inner city riots. Now retired from local politics, she runs a local nursery school. Rather than me going out on my own, I sort of take a sixth form from not only actually of black school, but from other schools in the area. Oh, like a shadow? Yeah, so <laughs> you could sort of shadow oh, right. around. You only have to look at the wealth in this city, the historic wealth, and look at the fabulous buildings, and look at the architecture, and you will see that that was done on black people's back. 
it's the first time that we've had anyone to claim some of that prestige and status for us, for black people in Liverpool. And we don't, it looks like we're going to be denied the chance to see Padrona riding in the Lord Mayor's carriage. The decision by full-time Labour Party officials to prevent Patrona becoming Liverpool's next Lord Mayor caused bitter resentment among her friends. Well, when I first met Patrona is when I came from Barbados in 1959. I can't really remember the month, but I was living with my brother and Patrona called to the house. When I came here, I, I am sure she was doing nursing. She had Ronald, yes, and then she went back to her nursing. I have known Patrona all of these years, and all I know about Patrona is good. And I am very upset because these people put these things in the papers about her, and all this scandal now, scandaling the girl name, and now they're telling her foolishness. You couldn't get a better Lord Mayor than Patrona in Liverpool. I'm telling you that. I was ill when I read it in the paper what people were saying about Patrona. It was a story which was going to cause heartbreak in some areas, disappointment to people, was going to have clearly a big impact. It's not a question of whether Patrona is a good person or a bad person. I would have thought she was on balance a good person. Brilliant. Sounds good. Do you want to fill me in on the details? That's not the same as being the best person, the best qualified person to be the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. And the, the uncomfortable truth is that an awful lot of Liverpool citizens would feel that she has disqualified herself from the office of Lord Mayor and really, knowing her own background, should not have put herself forward as a potential Lord Mayor because there was an obvious danger that the stories of her background would inevitably come out. It's not me at all. I have no secret past. I mean, you know, from the time I live in, in, in the area, I'm sure everybody knows what I would do from what I, what I wouldn't do. And I have no secrets. I mean, I, I, how I'm living now is just how I lived before. I have no secrets. I am not the person that the echo portrayed. I'm completely different to what the echo portrayed. Three convictions for prostitution. And I mean, you know, yes, I still would say that I wasn't a prostitute. Yes, I frequent clubs. Yes, I, um, you know, we all have a, a sort of skeleton in the cupboard. And yes, I, I went to clubs. And yes, I come, might have come home with, with guys, but not on a prostitute basis up and down the street looking for them. Women will do anything to keep their children, support their families. And I think it ill befits anybody who's never been in that position to be critical. And as I'm, although I'm not a religious person myself, it does say in the Bible, he who is without sin should cast the first stone. And I think there's been a, lo a lot of gross hypocrisy spoken about the Jones position. There is an element of satisfaction in, in digging out a big story, which is an exclusive story to us. But going with that is a degree of agonising on our part, saying, well, you know, have we got it right? Are we justified? Are we right to print it? are we sure that we've given a fair account to everybody involved in the story? And that's the bigger the story, the more difficult that is. Things that happened 20, 25 years ago, which were not a secret in our community, which were recognised, but disregarded because of the empathy, the understanding of recognising that a woman who's with a family, who's in a desperate position, will take desperate steps, any steps, to keep their children, to look after them, feed them. I think I, I, I found myself in situations, maybe if I did go to clubs, you know, me and some of the other um, friends in the area, that we would come back home with fellas, but I mean, not on a prostitute basis. We would come back, have a party, and most probably, you know, they would stay for the night, but not in the case of um, prostitution, just, Surviving. And I think it was good to be able to see either Yankee Seamen or GIs or, or, or people from, you know, the Caribbean or Africa or whatever and that come off the ships and we'd, we'd have a party and all that. And it would most probably end up that they would stay the night and get some money. And I don't see that as prostitution. 
the police would interpret it as prostitution and stop you because that's the way the, the force was anyway. I mean, in those days, nobody could walk up and down freely, especially black people anyway, without being intimidated by the police. They are not um, immigrants. They are, as to say, born and bred scousers like any of us. Undoubtedly, there was racial prejudice against them. They have never been integrated into Liverpool society in the way that they will have been in American cities where there's black population, for instance. In Liverpool, they were regarded as inferior in some way. They weren't sort of physically abused. It was simply that they were squeezed out of, of the best opportunities and tended to, to stay with, with themselves in the toxic area as a sort of ghetto, if you like. For 14 years, Neville Black has been an Anglican priest in the Granby neighbourhood. That community itself has, I think, has a bad image for many white people. Um, it, was, it was that community, sadly, that was the focus of the riot in 81. So lots of white people uh, can't see past the fear um, of Liverpool 8. It's seen as a community with problems rather than needs. It's seen as a community with, with, with difficulties rather than resources and creativity. Um, my prayer, my work, my hope is that Liverpool Lake people will, will be given an opportunity to express their full humanness. Turner, I, I believe, is a genuinely concerned person. My first response was to say to her, whatever may or may not have been in your past, uh, we are wanting to support you. She's always struck me as a very big-hearted woman, uh, very generous, open, sympathetic, empathetic to the needs of the community, always wanting the best for other people, and uh, she's always in my view, done the best for the members of the community. Because of the commandment, we always was brought up to say, love your neighbour as you love yourself. And we try to stick to it as much as we possibly can, no matter what the problem is. And if you could contribute something to alleviate, you know, the suffering of whatever it is, then we try to do that. Uh, some politicians sometimes you just begin to wonder what motivates them and drives them but I've never had that kind of doubt about Petrona I've always felt that her motives were genuinely a concern for other people and you can actually blacken a person's character and they have, they have no redress especially if they're someone with very little resources and very little power we all move on, we all make mistakes that we want to forget and need to have Given. I don't think Petrona needs forgiven for anything, actually. I think what happens is the other people, other people should recognise that women don't likely take steps to go into that particular field of employment or work. Um, it's an inevitably a desperate measure to support her own family. OK, Alf, how's it looking? It did put Liverpool in the headlines nationally. Um, it wasn't the sort of publicity we would welcome. The day after the Echo story in the newspaper, the national papers picked it up. The Star and the Sun, you know, had these outrageous stories about ex-hooker Lord Mayor. The, uh, the, the Sun uh, printed the following day a, a cartoon portraying her as the Deputy Lord Mayor offering, you know, offering special rates if she wore her, her chain of office, you see. I mean, absolutely outrageous. We know that prostitution happens and many women who find themselves involved in it are, are almost sucked in for reasons that are beyond their control and it's not you know, the great uh, sort of moral crusade, certainly on our part. And I, and I believe that the charges which made people stop and think, well, is this really the right person for this job, were the deception charges rather than the prostitution charges. 
As an employee of this old people's home in the 1980s, Patrona bought furniture for the residents. She signed higher purchase agreements in the name of the warden, who later complained to the police. A court was told Patrona acted without malice and made no personal gain. She was given a conditional discharge. As we were driving through city center, on every street corner was this newsstand with this big flyer, Patrona ruined my life. And I'll, I'll always remember we were riding in a taxi downtown and, and each time we'd pass a street corner and see one of these stands, you could just see it was like a knife cutting into her and she would just sort of sink lower and lower in, into her seat. It was, it was really, it was very soul destroying experience. I don't think she's ever acted out of malice in anything she's done and I would defy anyone to tell me she has. Um, the reality is she's acted, she has been misguided. But you can be misguided. You wouldn't expect to be pilloried and lambasted for it. Um, and no doubt there's things in everyone's life that we'd rather not have done, or we'd have done differently a second time round. It's almost as if the press were looking to, for something to pin on this person who had the nerve in Liverpool to become the Lord Mayor as a black person. I think a lot of white people wouldn't recognise the right of a black person to become the Lord Mayor. Now, I find that appalling. And it's, it's particularly just true of this, the city. There are black politicians now all over our major cities. Why shouldn't Liverpool have a black mayor? Why can't we rejoice in that prospect? The city is too, too sectarian, in, 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 and, and that's a weakness. She's been pilloried. She's a black woman from Liverpool Eight seeking to serve the community. The city desperately need, needs the black community to be represented in the democratic process, because that's important. Amid the glare of publicity surrounding Patrona, Labour Party officials moved quickly to prevent her becoming Lord Mayor by deselecting her as a councillor. To gain support for an appeal against this decision, Patrona went to the Labour Party conference in Blackpool. She wanted to lobby senior party figures like Tony Benn. As, as far as I know, he's doing a fringe meeting on uh, justice for the minors. Yes, of course. Uh, can, I, can I leave you a little bit of a leaflet that tells, uh, tells about the yes, media right. hatchet job that's been done on her? Well, we've had a bit of experience of that ourselves. <laughs> yeah. If you want a good press, don't consult Arthur or me, because we've never succeeded. <laughs> to, to, so we've had the benefit of being right. Now, have you got support in terms of your appeal against exclusion from the panel? I've got support from the community and in general, but the thing is, is that nobody's heard my side of it yet. And so that, that, that's the problem. But I mean, I, and you've been the victim, in my opinion, of an injustice not inflicted on you by those who elected you or even by your colleagues on the Liverpool Council, mm. but by officials who are not elected, uh, who are on the... Well, they may be elected, but they're not responsible yeah. to Liverpool people. So I think what you should try and do, if you can, is to either do that or appeal direct to the National Executive Committee. And I think there's a lot of sympathy for at the shabby way you were treated. And so it's important to get the case across. Mm -hmm. So you want two things, proper legal advice and friends on the executive. And thirdly, you want to get some proper media coverage mm -hmm. for your appeal. I'm pleased to meet you anyway. Thank and you are you much. here too for tomorrow, are you? Yes, I am. I'm pleased right. to meet you too. I'm very pleased to see you. To Take good care. Thank okay. you very much indeed. Bye-bye. <sighs> This is not a recipe for effective justice, but there are many people who cannot even afford the basic ingredients. Like my colleague, Councillor Petrona Lashley, Deputy Lord Mayor of Liverpool, who will find it very hard to sue the newspaper which has destroyed her reputation. <laughs> what do you think the feeling is in the Well, a lot of the women are saying that they think it's terrible, i.e. the press stuff about how you, as a, as a black woman, particularly now because the Labour Party is supposed to be 
all about the quotas and pushing women and black people into politics. That so they've been that quite, quite a lot terrific. Support. I think you've got a lot of support. People have heard about it, but people don't know you, so people are then asking, is that the black woman? People are then saying they don't know there's a campaign. They actually think, because the press has done this job on you, that you've gone away quietly. The support is there because it's not about politics. They don't see it as about politics. They see it as a moral issue. You've been found guilty before you've had a chance to put your side of the story mm, forward. Of course. I'm really um, feeling, well, heartbroken to a certain extent with the way I've been treated. They might naturally say to your face, oh, yeah, she's the prostitute. But there is a general acceptance that that happens to be a fact. What have my conviction of paid and paid and paid? How long do I have to pay for them? <laughs> I just can't see how long I've got to pay for the things. Once they get their fangs in you, uh, it's difficult to shake them off. And it's appalling. You're a private citizen, all right, you're a councillor, but you've got rights to privacy. Uh, and to the benefit of any doubt, you've got those rights. And the fact that they treat that with contempt is, is savage. Well, it's, to me, it's a rough ride right through, because, yes. um, you know, even though I've got the support from the um, yes. Labour councillors and the public, it's still not... Nobody's hearing my side of it. You know. Sorry. Um, Right. Right, sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry Thank about you that. Very much. Nice to see Thank you. Nice to see you. Earlier this month, Patrona lost her appeal against her deselection as a Labour councillor in Liverpool. She may yet go to court to seek a judicial review of the decision by the party's National Executive Committee. Until the local elections in May, she remains a councillor and deputy Lord Mayor. And so I'm very glad for the children to have an opportunity to meet you yeah. and to see such a positive role model. I was really thrilled in coming because I know it's, the French facilities are very hard to obtain and um, I really wanted to come and have a look to see what you were doing, really. Yeah. As you can see, these are just babies at the minute, mm -hmm. but obviously they're all going to be, they are adults of the future. Mm -hmm. And because of the area being built up now, especially from um, the new hospital and all that, I'm sure that we would need more crutch facilities anyway, and maybe it would help to um, alleviate some of the pressures of unemployment for people, that, you know, especially the one-parent families, that would be able to use the crutch, you know, to put their children there. I personally did have great hopes that you would actually, will actually become the mayor of Liverpool. Uh, and I'm mindful that the only other black person who's ever been in that position was um, John Archer, and he had to go to London. John Archer was the first black person in Britain to hold civic office, becoming mayor of Battersea in 1913. He was born in Liverpool in the mid-19th century of Irish and West Indian parents. Although black and mixed-race people could become Freemasons in Liverpool, they were completely excluded from the local political system. Black people are part and parcel of, of the fabric of life in Liverpool, but we are invisible. We're invisible when you walk in the city centre. We're invisible when you look around the institutions where people normally get work. And it's only in the most recent history that we've seen any numbers of black people getting any jobs in the council. We do not see black people represented in employment. Nowhere is this lack of jobs for black people more evident than in the rebuilding of Liverpool 8. As a councillor, Patrona has long campaigned to bring more investment to the Toxteth area and work for local people. The disgrace, if you like, or you know, the injustice is that there's only one local black lad who actually mm. works on site. <laughs> All right, Ron. The jobs crisis remains a major concern for Patrona and her local ward chairman, Carlton Benjamin. I mean, obviously, this will all be nice when it's all oh, done. Oh, yeah, properly. it's looking lovely. It's really looking lovely. Well, there's been millions spent on our community. Yeah, yeah and, and yet still the um, employment situation of it was really nil. I suppose what we've got to do then is keep banging on town hall. We certainly have to do that, you people, know, yeah. but we need... Yeah. I mean, it's only me and, of course, you know, the editorial councils are on its own, and people have the instinct that lots of money come into the yes. area. Yes. So we have to really keep banging and banging and banging. 
It was there a problem, did you feel, recruiting local people, or was that your policy sort of thing that you bring away? No, it's open to anyone. Yes. Uh, we, you know, we've tried to recruit local labour where possible. And uh, we've got one or two, and they're quite good. Mm. Very good. Mm. Very adaptable. Yeah, it's very disheartening to see that we've actually building the building in the community and, you know, yeah. five, as you said, our yeah. local yeah. labour. I mean, you know, there's yeah. not much hope for the young ones, is there? We'd never had black people in politics until since the riots. There's never been a black person in politics, as far as I know, before 1981. But then there hasn't been a black school teacher, a black lawyer, a black doctor, a black business person in the stores. We don't even have many black bus drivers, because the black people here have been denied opportunity. It is very hard, even for someone like myself who's got a long history, uh, of family being born in, in, in Liverpool to feel totally a part of it and that's mainly to do with the institutionalised racism and, and the barriers that people do put up um, to try and stop people from the local community from progressing if you like in life. The sad thing about Liverpool is that there's still a major absence of good professional black people, good role models for these people. They're being taught by white people with liberal ideas. But a white person can never put the sort of the shoes of a black person on. And um, we need, somebody needs to get inside the pain and then the anger and the frustrations of the denial. I don't think that white people are trusted. And we, ha we haven't, uh, I don't think we've earned the right to be trusted. Uh, because the racism is so deeply embedded in white attitudes in the city. I'm working on a piece of work for Blackboards, which is a group of artists based in the Liverpool 8 area. And it's um, painting black heroes and sheroes and locating them in derelict buildings in and around the Granby area. It's an educational project to help the children realise their self-worth and their history through these people. It's crucial to have role models. It gives them a sense of identity. It, they need to have that identity. Living in this community is the hardest task of living anywhere, anywhere, ever. Liverpool is the worst place for a black person to live. I believe that. Black children do not have a sense of self-worth. They don't see any positive images. Everything they see is negative. Everything. So they need, especially from the area, they need to see more positive women. That's what it comes down to, women. Because, I mean, you could say there's positive... There's role models of men for men and for boys, but for the women there's nobody to support them, to give them their voice, and I feel I can do that. For Sharon Walker, a talented local artist, what happened to Patrona Lashley has brought back bitter memories of the time when she too, as a young schoolgirl, was the target of sensational headlines in the national press. It brought it all back, the things that are happening now. You know, it just shows that not has changed. They haven't progressed. They, they, they're doing the same smut as they did with me. What they were saying about me, it was bad with me being a child, but it's not that I was a child. It's the fact that they'd done that to anybody. And I felt I had to explain myself and prove that I wasn't, you know what I mean? It's me proving that I'm not this person. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a monster. Children, the set fires, sort of smashing up glasses and jars and ripping down the ceilings. It was more, more or less imitating what happened in the riots. But I mean, we were kids and we didn't know any better. They made me out to be the one that instigated everything. The reporters were harassing me, you know, running down any person that knew me, my family, who couldn't go out the street. The description that they used for me was, she's big, black and really ugly. Imagine how that must feel to an 11 year old child. I did start to believe in what they were saying. I believed everything these help said. You know, I was the ugly one, I was, I would have must have done all these things, whether I realised it or I didn't realise it, I must have done these things that they were saying, because why would they say these things about me? That's the worst time I ever had in the whole of my life. I hated my blackness. 
couldn't wait to rebel against it. You know, everything that was black was negative. Schools wouldn't accept me after that because I was supposed to go into a secondary school. And they wouldn't accept me because, they, as I say, they believed, whether they believed or not, they didn't want to hear my side. What they read in the papers must be the truth. So I had to go in a um, kind of a home where I was only home at weekends. There is a distinction between being a city councillor, where I would accept that if you're going to represent all uh, walks of life within the city, then your representative should mirror that, and being the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, which is a, a different sort of office. Uh, and it's the sort of office where I do feel most of the citizens of Liverpool would think they would, look, they would want to see somebody as Lord Mayor who was um, a, a, a good role model, a good um, leader, a good symbolic leader for, for Liverpool itself. Often people who are exercising this kind of attack on an individual are the ones who have all sorts of skeletons in their cupboard and yet they go around and quite blatantly destroy a person's character and the good work that they've done because the good work that they have achieved and uh, whatever they've done in the past they've made, they've made reparation for that by the way they've actually conducted themselves and the kind of sense of uh, new beginnings, which is all to do with uh, the Christian gospel. And who is to say that Petroni, in fact, is not exhibiting that kind of life, life now in what she's trying to do for the community? Hello, hello. When she was nominated to be the, the Lord Mayor, she was being judged on her own merit then. It's only that the rest of the history, her history as a big woman, some of her history, not all the other people that she helped and supported over the years, or the anti-deportation campaigns that she was involved in. All the people that she fed, and the people she bandaged up during the riots, and the people who she went to the police station to stop the police beating up on them. The people who she supported, none of that come out. Instead, what came out was something that was just disregarded. It was disregarded by us, because at the end of the day, she is the sum total of her life. And we looked at the sum total of her as Padrona, as Padrona Lashley. I don't doubt for a moment that Padrona has got a lot of human qualities. I think the question is whether uh, she is necessarily the right person to be the Lord Mayor of Liverpool. I hope that the day comes very soon when there is Liverpool's first black Lord Mayor or Chinese Lord Mayor or whatever it is because I think we do need to work to bring our ethnic communities into the mainstream. And I think the tragedy of this story is that the, the, the first candidate for a black Lord Mayor um, you know, turned out to be such a controversial choice. She um, didn't deserve this treatment. She was worthy of our support and still is. But I did feel that she was going to be embarrassed more and more um, and was uh, the position had been un unsustainable and I, I actually said look Petrona for your own sake and your family's sake it would be better if you were to stand down. Reluctantly I came to that conclusion. She hasn't changed obviously as a person. People's perception of her and her acceptability in the office I think has changed. And it's important, of course, that we have as first citizen and Lord Mayor someone who enjoys the, the confidence of at least a majority of the people in Liverpool. The only way I feel we can change the system is by becoming a part of that in numbers um, to make, effectively, to make change from within. Given what's happened with Petrona Lashley, I mean, obviously my thoughts have wavered slightly on that fact. The effect I've seen on Petrona Lashley itself has made me think twice. It has hardened me to the fact that the Liverpool City Council don't want change, that they want to keep the status quo in Liverpool, that they do want to continue to have racist practice. I think the message what the council have given out now is that any person from the black or ethnic community who do wish to now pursue a career in, in, in politics or, or as councillors will actually be scrutinised and vetted far more um, severely, if you like, than any uh, white counterpart would be. There is not an alternative system running alongside this one. We have to, we are obliged to take a full and active role as much as we can 
in the particular sphere that you choose as an individual. But isn't the easiest thing just to keep your head down? Yeah. Yeah, it is. But for some of us, we can't do that. Because if we keep our heads down, there will be no prospect for our children ever to achieve in the meaningful sense. And it's only by having controlled anger. You don't jump up and down and scream and shout anymore. This doesn't mean you're not angry. You just find different ways to address the problems you face. badge was created out of the back of other black people and to see it's around the neck of a black person is a change because ordinarily we've had to support us and our forefathers and foremothers have supported the people who had that chain around the neck we got the gold in for them that's where the wealth came into Liverpool and so to see us getting our share of it is very important I don't think that's finished at the end of the day, the whole issue about it being snatched away. And I'm hopeful that we will see some sort of com compromise. I don't think we can win it this time round, but I think we'll win it next time. And there will be a next time, because they can't stop us. We want our share. And if I don't have my share of the wealth of this city, then my child will. And if it's not Petrona, then maybe it'll be my child who'll wear the chain. Looking in the mirror, I can see my eyes are glowing. Living testimony that the Next Sunday night, Joan Bakewell returns for a new series of Heart of the Matter. business <laughs>